Gentlemen, happy new beer. If I got any more relaxed, I'd be dead. No, not that one. That creeping gloom of not having worked. Uh, yeah, we got to get on. Get on her and stay a pitter patter. Let's black at her. We're going to have a compare and contrast of the Fap Off Sander versus the Milfucky. Of course, prior to that, we got to get her A part under the skirts and so forth, see how she chooches. Got to make the most important part of any YouTube video. Hey, I don't make the rules. An appealing thumbnail. C'est tout arrangé avec les gars du vu. Angle of the dangle, get the contrast right. She'll clean up nice in MS Paint. In contravention of the edicts handed down from the prophet of teardowns, e -E -E Dave Jones, on the e -E 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 -V 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 don't turn it on, take it a pot, and also framing you fuck. Let's see if I can't uh, get this thing. We're gonna test her. I, I have been using it, so I'm just gonna show you how it works. Essentially, you put the battery in, and I've been using this around the machine shop for deburring. It knocks the edge off real quick, but for parts that are actually going out to customers, you're going to want to use a, a proper deburr so you get that nice chamfer. If you have a, a look here, if we can get the macro in there, it's a little bit rough. Say you got some steel or some aluminium and you got to weld it or whatever and you want to just knock that off real quick. It does a nice job for that. Bearing in mind the high cost of this tool, 360 stuck, six rather, Copex here in the divided states of Kanakistan. That's a hell of a lot of beer tokens depending on the conversion rate. Uh, oh, I don't know. A six pack of American suds and a half chewed pack of gum maybe there's a couple things that do not show the cost that are completely antithetical to the cost one cheap sticker poorly printed the kerning is off all the letters are blending together and it's been appliqued sideways. also the indicator light there's no light pipe there it's just a three millimeter green led sticking right out of the side of the device. Not particularly elegant. The device itself appears to be made in the States out of US sourced materials. And that's tighter than a nun's habit. The battery made in Taiwan, if I'm not mistaken, this guy is assembled, would be made in Kenosha, Wisconsin. A little bit gritty here, par for the course. I'll just clean up the healing mat couple more on the hand feel side you know you, you gotta you gotta see if it feels good in the hand you can't stick it in dry you gotta warm her up mushy on this lock here if you listen to this lock compared to the milfucky quite a bit different pitch it just feels mushy and then when you do lock it you see that's got quite a bit of slop in there the change from fast to slow it doesn't seem to be too much of a snap action. Just from one to two, there's a little detent there, but it feels very, very mushy. And on the Milwaukee, it's quite a bit more positive. While we're on the Milwaukee, one of the things that they've done very smart is allowed you to have a lock pin. In this guy, you'd need two wrenches. And it's just that a little bit much uh, shorter and also way more convenient. You don't need to get a little tiny wrench in there in order to change your uh, accoutrement. Great gleeful schadenfreude. I'm glad I bought it so you didn't have to if we could get the thing to focus you fuck. Yeah, look at the clamshell there. So they had to, uh, they put this in a rotary mold so that they can over mold this uh, TPS after they do the basal platen. But you can see the fastener has already plastically deformed that fastener bore there you see that already a little crack in this side of the clamshell if you look down in here they've had to make they've had to mitigate the, the mold itself in order to hold that in the right position so they could over mold it and you can see all these little tabs been smeared off 
like it come out of there like it didn't want to come out of there it's uh yeah it's pretty gnarly actually considering of course the cost of this 366 that's before justin trudeau gets his fair share of the rake i mean the poor bastard's got to buy socks yeah see fucking hassle Never mind that 9 16 I'm, I'm gonna guess it's half inch and uh, seven. Oh, for frog snacks. Conveniently, they give you call it wrenches. There we go. Ah, so easy. While we're at her, let's check for sidewards compatibility. This one apparently 15 sixteenths, 7.9 millimeters. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, no. This one's way bigger. So if you get all the all the ends for the Milwaukee and you upgrade or you downgrade or whatever, there's no sidewards compatibility. Good to know. It's a new year. Mmm, menthol. We haven't seen these since uh, 1978. Obscure YouTube ref. Well, not so obscure. Trying to be more organized. Give the fascist pedants a, a fighting chance. And what did I forget? Oh yeah. That guy. Zip. Wow. Not much to her. We're going to have a better look at the inside of that half shell. And you see what I'm seeing? I'd like you to chime in if and you own this tool or if and you have for any amount of time. I'm wondering how well this overmolding stands up. I have a feeling that it uh, peels off in short order because there's no anchoring points, through hold anchoring points on the casement itself. Glass fiber reinforced 30%. No markings for this overmolding. I would assume it's butylene, so it will get attacked. Uh, it will get attacked by solvents and oils. And yeah. The only place where you see the through holes is on this little tiny guy, and you see they absolutely need those because it's already starting to peel off. Here's all the little teats what keep it in place in the mold. We normally see after the fact some, uh, some TIG welding, maybe with some stainless steel on that tool steel molding D2 or H13. Uh, in order to mitigate this from coming out of the mold prematurely, fucking up the, cocking up the works. And in this case, they put all these weird little teats on here. Starting now with the Pixie Path, interesting choice. A PCB board for the terminals of the battery. I would expect in a high-end tool to see a proper molded component, but nope. And then no brain boxery at all. It's all built in to the trigger switch as witnessed by this copper heat sink. And yeah, threaded on nice thick copper heat sink. You can see it's been it's been punched and then also been pressed to have, I don't know, just some sort of speed holes. The switch itself doesn't seem to be branded. As witness to the conversational nature of YouTube, if when you make a mistake, someone's quick to cunning hand the shit out of you. And in this case, I'm preemptively doing it. I'm mistaken. This is a Mark Hart, which is a good uh, chairman. I think you're tootlingen based out of and places all over the world. But that uh, is somebody's last name from the last century. And I think it's still family run and pretty, pretty high end name brand. But interestingly, you can see it's already getting corroded from where they soldered on the wires. And this switch, it might even be programmable. When you look at this header here, there's lots of open pins. And I was mistaken as well. Three millimeter, not green, but it could be RGB or it could just be green and red or some other color. But uh, we're, we got the Fluke 87 
five here, and we're going to diode test this to see if we can't get it to flash up. Oh, I'll tell you what, instead of piercing the insulation, let's do this. Oh, you fucking piece of shit. Never the right tip. And the battery's fucked. Sometimes you just gotta listen to the universe. Now we caught somebody maybe just prior to lunch break, not carefully, and you can see, no, you can't see, but at least it's in frame. Pinched the heat shrink and actually broke it. So we're right down to not quite bare wire, but we're clamped on the insulation of the wire. I wanna have a closer look at these corroded connections on this switch, and yeah. She forgot a few prior to bikini season. Dingle dangling in the breeze there, you see, you see the flyaway strands. That's pretty fucking crusty. Interestingly, the stop lever is quite snappy when it's not in the casement. But if you put pressure on it, it goes mushy. So there's something in the clamshell causing this lock switch, trigger lock, to go mushy. Here's the brush DC motor. On this end, nothing wrong with those connections. A little bit heavy on the solder and you can see it's stiffened up right back in to the wire. You have an actual bearing, not just an oil light bushing in the back of this brushed DC motor, right at 14.4 volts flux ring. Uh, no, the flux ring locks in there. Just a, a cheap old hobby motor, typical candy or uh, jelly bean part. We're gonna knock these two pins out and get the gearbox. Two big long pins, CPO, chrome polished OD. And there's the pinion, metal injection molded. They appear to have some calcium sulfonate grease on there. Little nylon front, what would that be? It's just a sort of a, a housing adapter. It might even be, well, no, maybe not nylon. It might be, what's the other one? Delrin. This is interesting. It's a typical, well, what appears to be a planetary gear set, but it's missing the peripheral ring gear. And there's just a, a reduction right into this other pinion these these guys are double gears if you can see down in there and just driving that so it's essentially a spur gear but the load is shared between these three planets and then if we go over here the plastic ring should yeah there we go the plastic ring should do something that changes the gearing and if we can prevent this from springing, sprunging, whoop, and then we get a quite a bit lighter reduction. So slower speed, uh, more, no, that would be faster speed, less torque in that case. So we're in gear one. No gear, ah, uh, you get what I'm saying. That I do have a soft spot for the snap-on is uh, occasionally soft wet spot you get in that uh, rape wagon and it costs you about an arm and a dick and you don't got to cut it off all at once you can do it on the installment plan and then you get the nice tool but there's nothing jumping out i ask you is there anything about this especially you fellas out there what bleed snap-on red you know you got the team tattoo you love the fap off everybody and <laughs> let's put that aside is there anything on here that screams it's going to last a great long time to warrant the, the cost? I'm not seeing it. The machining in here, a little bit rough. There was uh, some leftover chippage in there, what I, uh, I think fell out. You see the front bearing here. Now, this is a dust-making machine. Front bearing, not a sealed bearing, mind. It's just a shielded bearing with a bit of tin, essentially well, not open, It'll keep the big bearings out, or big ball bearings from chunking out, but there's no mitigation for dust ingress and staked into the plastic 
housing here, the gearbox housing. This is what's going to get hot, mind. Uh, just heat thermally staked in there. We can see why the gear change is mushy, feels mushy, because there's just a little labyrinth in the plastic housing. Now you're not going to use that gear change very often. I think you're going to uh, essentially just put it in high speed and leave her there. Now it does chooch quite a bit faster than the competition. So if and you're looking for 15,000 ripples, that might be something you're worried about. I myself, you know, you're sanding at 8,000 or you're sanding at 15, you know, is there any difference? Here's, here's the thing that really gets me. Did we get a lemon? I don't think so. I think the overall build quality is very indicative. It's not just one thing that is kind of iffy. However, if in, you got one of these and you've had it for a while and you think it's the, uh, the dog's balls, the, the bee's knees, go ahead and uh, please comment down below me. Uh, I do make mistakes and maybe I'm just not seeing anything here, but this, this to me tails the whole tail of the tape. The fastener affixation. Look at the marks here, the stress marks. Already cracked it. Yeah, look at these. Already cracked it. And in the battery well, the one, what we could see from the battery well is actually stripped right clean out of her. Put your bifocals on there, Ma, and you can see the difference in the uh, IDs. This one, stripped clean out of her right from the factory. It's a crying shame that I paid 366 bucks for this, but at least you didn't have to. <laughs> Again, questions, comments, uh, if I fucked up on something, please call me on it. This, uh, this is a discussion. We, we like to have things apart, have a peek under the petticoats, see what we can approve and what's uh, fan fucking tastic. Somebody else can steal the idea. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.